Welcome back to Consider This. Melissa and Sharad here with you. And so we are speaking to the co-authors of the book, Creating Future-Proof Cities, uh, Murali and Rexy, here on the show, talking about... So the, the book uh, essentially serves as a practical guide for individuals and communities to step up action in uh, mitigating the effects of the climate crisis. Now, I know the effects of climate crisis, me as an individual, but what can I do specifically in my household and as part of my community that I, so that I can contribute to stopping the effects uh, in this world, in the city? Uh, uh, Rexy, why don't you go? Yeah, I think one of the most important uh, actions that we need to take is to stop the wastage. In, in particular, stop the wastage of food. Because the thing is, most people don't realize about 8 to 10 percent of global emissions actually comes from food wastage. So we need to understand that we only purchase the food that we eat and we also eat the things that we purchase. Don't have that waste. And another part of it is also what we eat. And when I talk about what we eat, it's important that we start transitioning to more plant-based diets. Because uh, when we look at meats, for example, uh, the thing that when a loaf of, uh, say, a chicken or uh, meat comes on your table, you don't actually see the amount of land which is invested in actually growing the chicken mm. or growing uh, the, the produce to sustain the cows, the chickens, the livestock. And I wanted to take one example, the Amazon fires. Of right. course, this was uh, about four months ago, uh, but many people don't see the connection between the Amazon fires and how the ranchers in Brazil were actually lobbying for the clearance of the forest in order to grow, uh, in order to uh, farm the livestock. Right. So right. Th this is one thing that uh, okay. we but have to do. I want to move from you know, individual choices. I, mean, I think there's a lot of emphasis on what individuals can do, but perhaps what will g have greater impact is what we do on a collective level, especially Correct. cities. Now. And because your book is about f uh, future-proofing cities and spe specifically about strategies that are out there, Murali, talk us through some of the, um, the components of this uh, strategy to future-proof cities. Okay, so... Uh, on the mitigation side, you know, we talked about uh, there's also public transportation. How do you put in public transportation? How do you deter people from driving, right? How do you encourage people to walk and cycle, things like that? But from a city's perspective, you need to understand what is the effects that are going to fall upon the city. Then devise strategies to address that for adaptation. Mm -hmm. So there's mitigation and there's adaptation. So we're talking about heat stress. <coughs> we're talking about floods. Uh, we're talking about drought. Uh, so because of extreme, uh, extreme, uh, event, uh, extreme weather. There's also the rising sea levels. So you know Jakarta, for instance, is relocating its capital because they can't cope. Uh, the city is sinking because of subsidence, because they're taking water out of the ground. And then there's also sea level rise, and the two combined doesn't pose for a good uh, future scenario. Uh, so they're moving their city uh, to Kalimantan. Bangkok is also talking about moving their city right. uh, as to where they haven't decided. But these I mean, are what real. Mala what Malaysian cities so are Malaysian in danger? So Malaysian cities that are uh, immediately in danger of sea level rise, um, Telo Intan, uh, for instance, Batu Pahat, uh, Alostha, uh, capital city for Kedah, and also Nibong Tebal in, in Penang. So these are low lying areas. So if you go on the websites, there are several websites that give you simulations. You can tell in, in about 10 to 30 years, uh, quite a lot of these areas, a substantial amount of land are going to be underwater. So you have to decide. Do you continue investing and building in these places? Do you, do you start planning to uh, transition populations out? Do you put in hard infrastructure that's mm -hmm. going to cost a lot of money? So New Orleans, for instance, is, is having this very same problem. So it's not new, but we have to start thinking ahead. Uh, other cities like KL and Penang, so heat stress and all that. How do you address heat it? Stress. You know? mm. uh, can I ask you, I mean, uh, is, are these scenarios are just predictions that might not come true, or are we, uh, is the science pretty certain about the rising sea levels and so, such? I mean, what, oh, it's, what's, it's what's the science telling us? Maybe you, you go first. Rexy. Okay, uh, based on <coughs> what I read in the, UNET, the United Nations Environment <coughs> Programs uh, report, if we are going to go ahead with our unconditional pledges at the moment, we are going to see about 3.2 Celsius rise by the end of this century. And even with 1.1 Celsius rise until now, 1.1, 1.2 Celsius rise, you're already seeing so many drastic 
uh, weather impacts happening all over the world. The Australian fires, the Penang uh, floods in 2017, all these are just symptoms of a growing problem. And yes, I mean, it's, it, it will build up into something even more erratic, even more unpredictable over the years, if nothing is done. So, okay. He's being an optimist. Yeah. Right, okay. He's so he's that's the worst case and scenario. And you are a pessimist? No, I'm no. not, but he's being an optimist <laughs> with numbers. Because okay. I think, uh, he's talking about unconditional, right? right. So which means you've got, you, 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 you take out uh, these uh, emission controls uh, in an unconditional way. But we're not even doing that. Okay. So everybody's just doing whatever they want. Mm. So uh, the, the reports that I read, it tells me that uh, by 2050, we're definitely going to go beyond the two degrees. We're going to hit four degrees because the chart is just going that and we're not doing anything to pull it down. Right. So it's going to happen. So sea level rise is already happening. We've already seen it happening. And uh, there's data on NARIM, uh, National Hydrological uh, Institute of Malaysia. You can find out. And different parts of the country are affected differently. Okay. So Sabah and Sarawak is quite badly affected, the coastal areas as well. Um, and is Penang <coughs> Island? Because I'm thinking it's Penang Island, uh, you know, habitations like even Singapore. Yeah, are they more vulnerable than coastal cities? Or? It depends on your topography. So for Penang, actually, uh, we're quite safe. Uh, Penang Island. Penang Island itself is quite safe. But the mainland, uh, I think about a th half of the mainland will be affected. Wow. And a lot of it is paddy farms, right? And they're going to be inundated with salt water. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a problem with you can't grow paddy. No, you're not going to be submerged. Right. But you can't grow the same kind of crops anymore. Which will on affect those food security. Would, have, would have affect that, food right. security. Could, could I just get you to elaborate on something, really? You mentioned just now um, the role of uh, city planning when it comes mitigation and does adaptation. Mi mi mitigation and adaptation. <coughs> can you explain to me the difference between the okay. two? Mitigation is what we can do to reduce our emissions. Right? So as, as Rexy said, you know, from an individual perspective, eat less meat, uh, don't waste food, mm. uh, have less children, uh, <laughs> don't fly so much. You know, okay. Reduce your flying by half you know, on a yearly basis, that sort of thing. So it reduces your emissions. Collectively, that helps cut down. Okay. Right? From a city maker's perspective, you need to get people to walk, take public transportation, ditch the car, um, that sort of thing. So that's mitigation. Mm. Um, but adaptation is... Having in mind what's going to happen, what can you do now to adapt? How do you put in infrastructure, uh, nature-based infrastructure, for instance, to deal with floods that are going to happen? How do you uh, introduce infrastructure, and that also can be nature-based, to help with uh, heat? Uh, so things like that. Okay, all right, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to continue this conversation shortly on Consider This. Don't go anywhere.